evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. As Washington fusses over the Russia hoax for a third year in a row, a lot of other things are happening that don't get the attention they deserve. For example, the big tech companies have launched their fiercest attack yet on your right as an American to follow your conscience and to say what you believe. Unlike earlier generations of authoritarians, the tech moguls don't say any of this out loud. They're not honorable enough to state their intentions clearly. Instead, they drape censorship in the soothing banality of HR department cliches. Listen here to Mark Zuckerberg explain that the death of free speech in America is actually a really positive thing that we all need to get behind. We're taking a more proactive role in making sure that all of our partners and developers use our services for good. We're very focused on making sure that our recommendations and discovery surfaces um, aren't highlighting groups where people are repeatedly sharing misinformation or harmful content, and we're working hard uh, to completely remove groups if, if they exist primarily to, to violate our policies or, um, or, or do things that are dangerous. Who knew fascism could be so chirpy? Groups that do things that are dangerous. What exactly does that mean? Dangerous like hurting other people? Or dangerous as in saying things that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like or considers bad for business? Well, yesterday we found out Facebook released its latest enemies list. Alex Jones, Milo Yiannopoulos, Paul Joseph Watson, Louis Farrakhan, Laura Loomer, all of them were designated dangerous individuals and banned from Facebook and from its subsidiary Instagram. Alex Jones's company, Infowars, was banned as well and described as a dangerous organization. Didn't explain exactly how. How dangerous is InfoWars? Well, Facebook believes it's so dangerous that you can be banned from using the platform, Facebook, just for sharing its content unless you simultaneously denounce it. Let that penetrate for just one moment. Think about it just for a second. Mark Zuckerberg is not simply censoring opinions. He's prescribing which political opinions you're allowed to have, which conversations all of us in this country can have about America. Keep in mind that nobody voted for Mark Zuckerberg. He's 34 years old. He's completely cut off from reality. He's worth $72 billion. And yet he can single-handedly make our First Amendment irrelevant after 250 years. Here's the most amazing thing of all. Our media think that's great. Now, journalists are supposed to defend free speech. You would think that was their job since they make a living from it. But when corporate America issues an order, when Mark Zuckerberg says jump, their question is how high, Mr. Zuckerberg? Listen to them celebrate Mark Zuckerberg and sell you out completely. Why are they doing this now? Well, it's a good question as to why they waited this long, but... Um, yes, they, they, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, so Alex, is, Alex Jones has been banned from Facebook for a long period of time, but now they banned him. They banned his, like, little underling, Paul Joseph Watson. Now that they kicked him off the platform, that's great for now, but it doesn't roll back the clock. Well, you have also excesses in the First Amendment and the Second Amendment right now. You know, I don't think that the, for, the forefathers said, well, you can say, you know, all sorts of hateful things and spread it around the world, literally spread it through the Internet. I have no issue with it at all. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. I think they are horrible for our society. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. But don't worry. These people aren't terrifying or anything. Don't kid yourself. It's not just Alex Jones they want silenced, muted, shut down. Recently, the Pointer Institute, which is a nonprofit that's supposed to support journalism, put out a list of what they called unreliable news outlets. Can you imagine unreliable self-awareness and short supply in the journalism business? But Pointer crafted this list with the help of the Southern Poverty Law Center. So you can imagine who made the list. The Washington Free Beacon, The Daily Caller, The Daily Signal, The Washington Examiner, basically everyone who's not CNN or MSNBC or precisely aligned with their politics. Pointer called for advertisers to blacklist and therefore bankrupt these news outlets, crush them. Their fellow progressives applauded. As far as they're concerned, this is total war. What we're watching now in real time is this country become unfree. So the question is, who exactly is defending us? in all of this, us who might dissent from Mark Zuckerberg's view or think that NBC News maybe doesn't tell the whole truth all the time or don't trust Mark Zuckerberg to control what we think. What about us? Who's standing up for us? Where are our leaders in Congress? Where's the White House? Nowhere. As long as big tech isn't hassling them personally and directly, as long as their accounts remain open, they don't seem to care. They're fools. 
Will any of these people get reelected in a country where left-wing tech companies control the terms of political debate? Huh. Can you really win a presidential election if Google opposes you? No, you can't. Not a chance. Not right now. Without free speech, there is no democracy. It's time to stop lying about that.